Hello and welcome back to a new tutorial. This week we're going to be looking at growth effects in Cinema 4D. So I've got this coffee glass here that I've imported from the asset manager. So if you go over here, you can open up this tab here and I just searched glass and I just picked out a model from this collection. I found this nice coffee glass. So that's what I'm going to be using for today's tutorial. So this is how it comes in. It's got a subdiv on it. So if I hit NB, I can see the wireframe mode on this model and I need a lot more geometry uh, and I need it to kind of be a little bit more evened out because we've got some stretching here and then it kind of bulks up down here. So what we're gonna do is convert this to a mesh. So I'll right click and go down to connect objects and we can just hide or delete this original one. We don't need that now. Um, and then with this new one that we've just turned into a model, we're gonna gonna go over here and holding alt we're gonna click remesh and so now this is gonna remesh our geometry uh, but we want more than just this so this is looking good but we definitely need more make it a little bit more dense so I'm gonna change this to poly count and then I'm gonna up the poly count to let's go for like 32,000 and you can see this has made our mesh a lot denser which is good that's what we need um, so yeah, this is good. So what I'm going to do is right click again and turn this into a geometry. So connect to objects and we'll disable this one, turn it off. So now we have our nice remeshed coffee glass. So the first thing we can do is add a vertex map onto, onto our glass and let's hit use transfer and it should have added this freeze field into our vertex map if it hasn't you can just go down to here and drop it in yourself now i use this freeze field in a lot of my tutorials i use it in pretty much all my projects that i work on but this tutorial is probably the best use case for it in terms of what it actually means when we set this mode to grow but this is what the freeze field is made for at least the way i view it <laughs> we want to create a point from where our growth is going to start. So whether you want to start it from a point on the geometry or maybe just like from the bottom, maybe we could do from the bottom so it just kind of grows up. Um, so what we could do is drop in a linear field and set this to max, or just, it should already be on max, but if not, just make sure this is set to max. Um, and let's get the direction set up correctly uh, so it should be yeah I think we need positive Y and our model is really small if I was to drop in a cube you can see it's really small so uh, we could up we could make it bigger we could actually just increase it or make it bigger doesn't matter really how much bigger but this would do and then I'm also going to scale this down oh. Uh, to scale down fields properly, you can change this tab to object and now we can hit T and scale this down. Click and drag whilst you're doing that. And yeah, so this is looking good. So let's go back into our vertex map and we should be able to see now how this is working. So yes, this is good, but we need to flip the direction. Let's do it to negative Y because we want it to start from the bottom and grow up. So. I'm going to just kind of drag these points in, make it a little bit tighter. And yeah, this, this should do. So I'm going to keyframe. Uh, you see it changed when I went to keyframe three. It's because the freeze effect is already working. But anyway, but let, let's ignore that just for a second. And um, with linear field selected, let's go coordinates. And on the wire coordinate, let's hit keyframe. And then let's go back to the first frame and let's just set this to be as long as it's lower and not touching the geometry that's all we need so i'm going to set a keyframe there so you'll see when we hit play now our, it growed really quickly but our growth effect is working on the vertex map but we need to tweak the settings of the growth uh, so let's slow it down let's turn this radius down to like mm, three or two well, let's see we'll see what this looks like yeah this is looking pretty good it's, not it might be a little too fast so let's maybe go for like 60 Ooh. and yeah this is a nice pace could even go further i'll go for 40. yeah i like this this is a good pace now i want to create a little bit of randomness i don't want it all to kind of just be going up 
in at one pace like it's almost like a solid line going up I kind of want some organicness to it so with this freeze selected if we go down here and hold shift and hit the random field we'll drop this random field below our freeze inside this radius folder if we up this scale a bit and then hit play you can see we've got this growth this organic growth kind of look we could keep playing around with the scale maybe we want it bigger maybe we want it smaller let's let's actually try go a bit lower 72 so yeah it's kind of yeah it's a bit more there's like more streaks but you see it's actually slowing down the animation and also we're getting these gaps left behind so to fix these we're going to want to come into our random field so we're going to fix the gaps first so inside this random field animation speed let's turn this animation speed up let's try 85 for now and you can see because it's a noise basically it's a, a random field it's kind of like a noise uh, a noise layer when it's animating with this animation speed a good way to visualize this I've just added in a plane with the same setup but it's got this random field which when animating you can see it's kind of just activating points and then deactivating points so kind of red and yellow so when this is mixed with the freeze field if I turn this on you can see when whatever parts have been activated are going to stay activated so once they turn yellow they're going to stay yellow um, so yeah that's a good way to visualize that's like what's going on so I'll, t I'll turn these back off we'll head back over here let's go back into this vertex map and yeah so now that we've got that animation speed turned on it's going to fill in these gaps that are left behind now we've noticed it slowed down our growth a little bit so maybe we want to fix that just turning up the effect strength maybe we'll go 80 double it and this is looking really cool it's looking really nice I'm going to up my timeline just a little bit so I can actually see it finish. But yeah, looks like for the most part it's working. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to be using a volume builder to create this growth. So holding alt with our coffee glass, we're going to drop this into a volume builder. And you can see it's created, it's turned the mesh into a volume, but it's really uh, the voxel size is far too big so we need to turn this down a lot so we can drag this down and I mean one centimeter looks okay at the moment we'll be able to tell so if we go volume builder hold alt and we'll do a volume mesher it's gonna now turn our volume into a mesh now this looks a little bit too low poly so we could go back into our volume builder object volume size let's go like 0.7 I mean, yeah, we can continuously change this. So maybe like one, when we're actually done and we're happy with the effect, we can turn this down like fairly low to a point that our computer can handle. Um, but I guess for working, let's keep it at like 0 0.7, 0 0.8, just for the speed and purpose of the tutorial. Now we kind of need that vertex map information that we created to kind of tell this volume builder where we want to be growing. Um, so we kind of want this vertex map to be inside this volume builder but we can't actually drop them inside this objects tab so what we need to do is inside that vertex map we need to select both of our fields we need to right click and go group field from selection and you can see that's created a group and it's also created a group in our objects outliner so this is what we're going to be dropping into our volume builder so if we select that and drop in our new group field folder above our mesh and then with that selected we go down here we've got this creation space we need to set this to objects below so it's going to be affecting the objects below it in this hierarchy so this isn't going to do what we need it to do just yet we need to change the mode to intersect now for some reason it's left this geometry here uh, so what we can do to fix this if you have this issue is go back into your original vertex map open up that folder go to your freeze and you've got this button here clear hit clear and that's gonna refresh everything sometimes you might have that issue um, I don't know if it's just like buggy or anything but this button's quite helpful so just come back to this if you're having any weird issues and it might clear things up for you so just hit clear so now we've got nothing there and now if we hit play we've got our growth working and I'll hit NA to, so we're gonna have the line See, it's all quite jagged that's why we can add more to our voxel size 
So I could come back here, I could lower this a little bit more. It's gonna slow things down a bit, but yeah, you can keep lowering it to make it even finer. But yeah, this is looking, it's looking quite nice. So once you're happy with how it's growing, like you can keep coming back and tweaking like your, uh, the freeze growth, like the strength or the random field, if you wanna have like bigger chunks, maybe in your random field, you wanna mess around with the scale. So I could up the scale, hit play. And now I've got like kind of broader waves growing up. So this looks quite nice. But yeah, once you're happy with it, you can go back into your volume builder and we can drop this cash layer, which drops a cash layer above everything. And we can hit animation because this is an animation. Let's just set it from zero to, let's try 120. And then just make sure your voxel size is at the level you want. So I'm gonna go fairly low. I'm gonna go like 0 0.2. And I'm gonna hit cache and then I'll come back once that is done. Okay, so that took a few minutes, but we're back and the cache layer is finished. So if I play, this is looking a lot smoother. And where I've lowered my voxel size so small, it's actually created a separation in the glass, which is how the model actually does look. But when the voxel size is high, a little bit higher, the I think these parts of the mesh just merge, which looks fine as well. But um, yeah, this is cool, it adds some extra layers. But if your PC can handle it, then yeah, you can push it a little bit further. It only took me maybe just like five minutes, maybe not even that. And that's now cached, so we can we can keep that information and we don't we can just play back smoothly. I mean, once it does get to the higher voxel count, you can see it as a live count, it, it will start to slow down, but that's just natural. But it's gonna be a lot quicker than it would be when it's trying to uh, generate it and calculate on the fly. But anyway, now that that's done, we can apply our original material on to our volume measure once my save finishes and can drop that on and yeah so now when we hit play or we can even just scrub through this is going to look nice we can get this set up in a render um, and it should look all good so that is it for today's video thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed please be sure to drop a like if you learned something new and i hope to see you in next week's video hey.